Well, welcome back uh, to the channel, my YouTube family, my G4 family. I hope you're doing well today. And thought what I thought I'd do. Thank you so much for all the support on the game review that we did on Sniper Elite 5 last week. And as promised, I will be doing a beginner's stroke strategy guide for that game today. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Let's do it. We're going to assume for today's guide that you're either um, new and this is your first Sniper Elite game or um, you're looking to play this game and you just want to get up to speed fairly quickly before you start. So either or, um, this guide will cover it. If you're quite experienced in Sniper Elite games um, <laughs> and you're pretty, pretty up to date with the mechanics, then this might not be ideal. Uh, for you, but you may well find some tips because the game has changed since Sniper Elite 4 Let me tell you and there's some new additions to the game So we're going to go through quite a few of the basics today and um, it is going to be fairly strategic But I'll give you quite a number of tips in this video and it will get you up and running and started and um, yeah hopefully make you the um, Absolute gun sniper that you should be so it's fair to say that Sniper Elite, any Sniper Elite, is pretty much a stealth game. It is a bit like Splinter Cell with um, with a sniper rifle, and so that's kind of the mindset that you, you need to get your head into. And um, so the first uh, bit of advice or the first tip I've got for you is be slow, steady, and methodical. Take your time. Don't rush it. Work your way through the map. And um, just uh, don't be in any rush to get things done because if you do you are going to be in a whole world of hurt and pain so nice and slow nice and steady um, and nice and strategic okay so let's start with the uh, weapons and then we'll work our way through uh, bit by bit so when you come to uh, start a mission you should see a similar you see a slightly different screen to this, but effectively you have access to your loadouts. Now, I think this probably turns up after mission two. So if you don't see it after, on mission one, don't worry about it too much because you will have default weapons. So once you get into your loadouts, assuming you're playing the campaign, you come to this screen here. Now you have a number of weapons that you can choose from and these weapons will unlock as you can see, for instance, um, with the RSC 1918, complete the kill challenge in mission seven, and that will unlock. So you can unlock you unlock these weapons as you go, and that goes for all of these weapons here by doing different things. Okay. Um, each weapon will have a number of attachments that you can use, and each of those attachments will have. Uh, positive um, things that it will do to the weapon but it will also have negative so there's pros and cons to every attachment that you use in the um, in the game and with your weapon so take some time once um, once you get into the screen and figure out what kind of weapon setup you want to do and again with the attachments they will unlock um, when you are doing various things within the missions and um, so it depends if you want a particular if you identify a particular um, attachment that you want just look at what you have to do to get it to unlock the most important thing um, I'm going to say about um, the weapons is that your sniper is pr pretty much your most important weapon um, given it is stealth sniper game and you're going to be picking off the majority of your uh, enemies at, at range but again with sniper elite what they've built in is you can play up close close and personal but it just makes life a lot harder if you decide to do that so um, make sure that you with the sniper there are a couple of uh, attachments that I think you really need to ch play, pay close attention uh, to the first one uh, being the optic and what I'd suggest with your optic is you're looking at the longest zoom that you can get access to at all times so you will start off I think with the A5 when in call 
on your sniper, which is a uh, um, which is an eight times zoom. What I'd encourage you to do as you go through the game is make sure that you're running the longest zoom you can get your hands on at that particular time. So you can see, uh, I tend to run the 14 times zoom, and that's that's good for me. And we'll come back to the pros and cons of that in a second. I think the best you can you can hope for is this A2 optical, which is a 16 times zoom. But um, the reason I say run a longer zoom, it just gives you more flexibility in um, in the ranges you can you can cover and uh, makes you much more precise so that you can zoom in. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. As you can see with the A1 optic, I use this one, and it, as they say, it's, it, the pro is a very high zoom. Con is poor aim stability, poor visibility. Now, I don't find that this um, scope it has poor visibility for me, personally, but uh, the aim stability is something that you can counteract with the other attachments on your weapon. So, just take your time when, you're, when you are equipping any attachment just to try and balance some of the negatives um, with other attachments if that makes sense so that's the first thing I would pay attention to on the sniper the second thing and one of the most important things is a suppressor I would encourage you to have a suppressor on so that you stay off the radar now um, not all suppressors are made even as you can probably see here so there's there's a Maxim Mark II suppressor the Moore suppressor the Mark II 2S suppressor. What's the difference G4? The biggest difference in, in this, ignore the pros and cons for a minute, but have a look at the um, audible range on these suppressors. And you want that number, the audible range number, as low as possible. Um, and I think the best you can achieve is in the Mark II, which is 66 meters. Why do you want it so low? The audible range works um, in this way. From we'll take this Mark II suppressor as um, as the example, which is audible range at eighty-one meters. So, from zero to eighty-one meters, that your gun will be audible. Beyond that, the enemies cannot hear it. So, the lower that number, uh, the better, because if uh, it means that you can sit back and pick people off at long longer and longer ranges and you won't be detected as much if you you were running something like the maxim it's a 96 meter uh, audible range then you've got much more um much more chance of being spotted or being detected so make sure that the audible range is as low as possible um, you can go loud if you like but uh, if you go loud, just be aware you can see, for instance, the Halcon 43 is 148 meters audible range. And there's one down here somewhere. There you go. The uh, Mark 1 boys break is 178 uh, audible range, which means that if you had the Mark 1 boys break on and you shoot the gun pretty much every time, you're going to be detected and you're going to have to run and hide. It's going to take a heck of a lot longer to get through the, the missions than it, it would if you have a suppressor on. So those are the two um, those are the two kind of uh, attachments that I would say that you must pay attention to on your sniper. Of course, with all the other weapons, I'd just, just build them as you like. Um, but you know, I would encourage you to have suppressors on all of your weapons. Um, they don't actually work the same on the other weapons. Like for instance, the well gun. Um, you can see the audible range is 44 meters, but you know that really doesn't mean that much because you're up close and personal with that gun. But you want to you want to kind of stay off the radar as much as possible. And again, you've got to ba also balance this out from uh, the pros and cons. So. A lot to think about with your loadouts, but um, if you um, concentrate on the sniper with the, the long optical and a good suppressor, you should be good to go. So the next thing I'd suggest you get yourself familiar with is the utility wheel. Now, depending on which system you're um, you're running, it will it will um, it will bring up the utility wheel in, in different ways. For me, on Xbox, it's my left bumper. Press the left and hold the left bumper and it brings my utility wheel up. Now, there's a few things to understand here about the utility wheel. You'll see that my sniper's on the top 
My whale gun is on the right and my pistol is on the left. Now, what this will, what this is basically saying to you is that if you press on your D-pad, if I press up on my D-pad, I'll get my sniper. If I press right on my D-pad, I get my secondary. And if I press left, I get my pistol. So that's what that relates to. Um, the rest of it, obviously, you can just choose. Um, you can choose and um, have equipped. And you see, as I choose these things, just pay attention to the bottom right of the the um, of the screen, and you can see the icon changes depending on what I choose in that weapon move. So get familiar with where your weapons are actually located, because it's very important when you you're in game and you need to swap quickly uh, understanding which weapon goes in which slot and that's one that that kind of got me when I first started playing the game that I'd try and choose uh, my uh, SMG because I'd be looking at my character like this and the SMG looks as though or the secondary weapon looks as though it's on the left of course that's where the pistol is so just get your brain familiar with where these weapons are as far as choosing them so that's the first thing the second thing that I would suggest is that you, uh, as you're running around the game, get into the habit of having your bandages um, chosen and have them on by default because um, that is going to be the most used utility item in this wheel um, because you're going to get shot and you're going to have to heal up in some instances fairly quickly. So make sure that you've got your bandages um, changed uh, chosen sorry uh, straight up at the bat now to change that all you have to do is obviously just go into the wheel and change something else okay change it to something else and change it back as far as the bandages go versus the med kit i'll show you what the med kit does so you choose the med kit like this you can see the icon has changed and what i do on xbox again it will be different on each system is i just hit my right bumper and that will apply the med kit. And the med kit will give me full health. The bandages will only give you one segment of health. That is the difference. But once you've used the med kit, it's gone and you have to pick up another one. The other thing about the the um, utility wheel here is um, you can see with the sniper, when you highlight the sniper, I have access to different ammo types. So I'll do that. So I can cycle between different ammo types and it gives you a description of what those will do. So you might need those in different situations. And again, these will unlock as you go through your uh, through the, the missions and the campaign and you do certain things, but you will pick up these different ammo types as you go through the game also. So that is the utility wheel. Okay, so we're loaded into the map and I think the first decision that you need to do is bring up the map and just see where everything is. Where are all the markers? Where is where, what do we have to get done to um, to make this successful? So um, you can see in this one, there's a number of we'll hide the objectives from there. There's a number of things that need to be done. So your first decision is to um, is to figure out which way you want to approach this. Do you want to go to the left side of the map? Do you want to go to the right side of the map? How do you want to approach this? So in this example, what I'd suggest you do, and this is the way I think, is that you can see that most of the objectives are heavily stacked on the right side of the map. So for me, I'd probably come down here, make this the first thing I do, um, the, the assassination, and then work through one by one back towards the left-hand side of the map. Or, so... That's generally how I'd approach it. Up to you. What I would say is make sure that you look at these areas that look as though they don't have anything in them, no objectives, because you're going to be rewarded for doing that. And also, there is it's possible that there is another secondary um, objective here and it's hidden. And until you go into that part of the map or or if you're doing a little bit of a surveillance um with your binos, unless you come across it, then it will stay hidden and then you'll finish the, the mission and you won't have completed everything that you have to on the map. So have a plan of attack. That's the first thing I'd say. And once you're, 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 um, you've got it in your head, which, what you want to do first, then it's a case of just hopping 
uh, and uh, seeing what the map looks like. Okay, so here we are in the map, and the first thing you've done once you now that you've got the your right set out, uh, what I'd suggest you do is you pull your binos out, your binoculars, and start marking as much as you can on the map straight out the gate if that's possible. If there are people around have a good look around and get as many of them marked so you know where they are as possible and uh, you're going to see there's guys right next to me this guy right here somewhere where did he go there he is so get your binos out have a good look around familiarize yourself with the, the um, map have a look if there's any obstacles in your way and um, there you go, so there's a guy way over there. Use your zoom in and out with your binos so that you can actually tag these guys. So you can see, I couldn't tag them until I zoomed right in and zoomed right back out. There's another guy there. So tag all these guys, it will help you a heck of a lot if you get into trouble. Um, and once you've tagged them once, you don't have to worry about it again. They're tagged for the entire map. Um, and so you know where they are. So spend the time. Let's go through the whole map. Straight out at the, the gate. And have a good, good look around and see what's available. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to make, take a shot on an enemy. So scope in your rifle. Now, you can zoom in and out. You remember what I was saying about the optic before? Um, the other thing you can do if you use your right and left D-pad is you can actually change the range. And um, I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, but then once to, to get super accurate, just press, for me it's my um, left stick, I press down and it will give me this little diamond. Now, if I use my right and left um uh, D-pad it actually changes where that diamond sits so depending on the range and you can see it's taking up to 600 so that's going to change um, depending on what range you think you're at so you want to try and get it as close to the center as possible and then once you're ready there you go nice clean shot and yeah he's not getting up is he so there's one very important thing that you need to understand about scoping in and it drives me nuts and it, it, this is just part of the way the game is designed. You can see opposite me, I can see a couple of enemies and um, I can see where they are. So I go to scope in and my, my scope's way, way off what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the guy way over to my right there. Now you'll notice on the screen there's a little white arrow. If you move that white arrow and this is something you need to get in the habit of move that arrow in his direction then scope in then that fixes it so make sure you're positioning that white arrow first and it can be a little trick as you can see get it sort of close scope in then hit your right bumper to get your range and then you should be good there you go done that will save you so much frustration and it's one of my bugbears about this this series about how that scoping in works and um, because you think you're on you think you're on target and you can see you just scoping in and you're way off so make sure you're getting that little arrow right onto your target and there you go make your pinpoint accurate every time so we've looked at aiming down sight with the sniper I want to do one last thing about um, aiming down sight with your other weapon so if you look at this uh, pistol for instance I'm going to aim down sight with the pistol and you can see I've got a scope on there now pay attention in the middle of the screen when I scope in it will say aim toggle uh, of course that button's going to be different for different systems but uh, essentially it will do the same thing so if you don't like that view you hit the A button and it will change it and change it back um, similar to the, the um, the SMG I can toggle the iron sights or toggle off so that's a, if you don't know about that um, in certain situations I'll toggle it on in certain situations I'll toggle it off pretty much with a pistol I'll have it 
sighted most of the time and again I can change the range on uh, things and whatnot so that is a very very helpful thing to know about so another thing I would encourage you to do is pick up weapons from your enemies now you can see there when I picked that up that's a Gebert I, I was Gebertly getting that um, there's a little thing above the gun on down in that right hand corner that says take ammo and all you have to do is just press and what it will do is it will take the ammo and drop the gun. Now, to be able to do that though, you have to unlock a skill here. Um, I think it's in the equipment tree, yeah, it's scavenge weapon ammo. Ammo can be removed from found weapons. So it's worth spending a point um, to be able to have that to work. And if, you're, uh, if your weapon is full, then it won't give you that prompt to take the ammo, so... It's a good way of grabbing ammo across the map without having to look uh, for ammo caches or anything like that. You can just use the enemy's weapons. Of course, you can pick up and use this weapon if you like, and I would encourage you to do that. There's going to be a number of uh, weapons um, at your disposal for you to use. Now, one of the next things that I suggest you do is I've, um, I've spent some time uh, getting rid of these guys. Go hide them. Go put them somewhere where they can't be seen because I don't know how many times um, I've had people come into an area I never thought they would walk into, find a body and go and hit the alarm and then we're in a, a world of pain. Now if you can find the, there are uh, crates around the map where you can actually hide bodies and um, hopefully I've got some footage of that. If not, just stick them in a corner somewhere so they're not visible. And um, yeah, just a, do a nice little bit of clean up. And um, yeah, keep the place all nice and tidy. But the, the main thing about doing that is um, it does uh, stop you being detected. Now make sure you're picking up the crowbar and the wire cutters when you find just them. Because you'll need those for, for doing all kinds of stuff. So. Okay, so let's move on to stealth now, and uh, be aware that if you are going to run around the map like a madman, you're going to get detected very, very quickly. Ooh, we've got a, we've got a contender here. I I can. So, uh, get used to crouch walking in certain situations. If you're confident that the area is uh, clear, then you can run around uh, like we're about to do here, but if not, Crouch walking will be your friend. Uh, the name of the game here is to stop being detected by the enemy. So if you're running around like a madman, you can't do that. But uh, the chances are you're going to get detected if there are enemies nearby. So one thing I'm going to encourage you to do is seek out the alarms, the main button on the alarm and take it out. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So you're going to see all these kind of yellow speakers all over the place. But what you want to find is the main alarm button. You can see it down there on the right. We're going to get our sniper in a second. We'll zoom in so you can see exactly what it looks like. This is very important that you take this out as soon as you enter an area if you can find it because it will mean that you don't they can't call in reinforcements if you shoot that button basically just shoot it and it's um, and it's good to go so lastly what do you do if you get detected and you can see we're about to say enemy hunting the best thing to do is uh, to run away so you're outside the detectable range and that means you're going to have to go back a fair way now you can see I'm just riling them up so that they chase me if it goes to yellow then it will take a, a lot less time to to reset than it will if it's at red but generally the best strategy is just to get out of there completely Go, and you'll see what I go a, f a long way back here to get away from them and go all the way back so you're outside the detectable range and just wait it out. The other thing is you can just hide in the grass like in within a detectable range a bit so you're out of sight and again just wait until um, things go to the all clear and then you can go back into the area. Okay, I think we'll leave it there for today. There's so much more we um, 
we can tell you and that could end up as an hour video but I, I want to leave it there they are really the basic uh, tips that I wanted to, to share with you to get you started in the game and give you a better understanding make you a little bit more stealthy a little bit more strategic know how your equipment work all that good stuff hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it is helpful for you when you're playing the game if it is, I'd love to hear from you. If there's anything that I've missed that you think is important, leave a comment down below. If it has helped you, leave a like rating so I know that it is helping you because Gaming for XP is all about helping my fellow gamers um, with a better understanding of the game and improving their, their skill levels and achieving uh, XP and all kinds of stuff. So a like rating is always appreciated. It really does help the channel. And I'll thank you and say we'll catch you next time on the channel. Oh, see ya.